Hello everyone and welcome to my video on 10 quick commands that you should know getting started in Linux. Now if you're planning to become a DevOps engineer or a system admin, you're always going to get interview questions in regards to Linux. So it's very important to know as much as you can about Linux. And this guide is going to explain 10 very basic commands that you should know that will almost always come up in a job interview. So let's go ahead and get started. Now the first command is the ls command and you're going to want to understand this command and all its different options because there are a lot of them. It's a bread and butter command that you use every time that you log into a Linux terminal. So just to go off the basics, uh, ls-l returns everything in long format. That means it returns all the permissions and everything. So you're going to want to understand all these flags on the left hand side. And just to briefly describe them right here, the first character is reserved for the file type. So you can see these first files are actually directories because it has the D flag. And these ones are regular files because it's just a slash. Now there's quite a few different Linux file types that I'll go over in a separate video. But just understanding this is all you really need to know for now. The next set of characters are actually the permissions and you can see this has read, write, execute, read, no write, execute, read, no write, execute. And it's going to be important for you not only to understand how to read these permissions but how to actually set them as well. The next thing is a uh, username and group. So we can see these set of files up here all belong to the pi user and pi group. And then these ones over here belong to root. And then after that, you got a file size and timestamp. And the next thing you're going to want to do is go over all the different options that the ls command has. So there's lots of different ways that you can display information using the ls command. Sort it by file size, sort it by time, sort it by file extension type. You can add color, remove color, and a whole lot of other stuff. So I've put up on the screen all the different options that the ls command has. What you'll want to do is hop into a terminal and test them all out and fully understand them all. And it's really going to help you on your day to day work as well as in job interviews. So that's all I'm really going to say about the ls command. Let's move on to the next command. So another simple command that everyone should know when using a Linux system is how to change your password. And it's as simple as just typing passwd and then putting in your current password and then a new password. And you can see that updated my password successfully and that's all it took. The next set of commands I'm going to give you here is the manual and info commands as well as apropos. So these commands allow you to learn more information about Linux and the Linux commands that you're using. So if I type man and then type in a command like ls, it gives us the manual pages for using the ls command. So you can see this is the name of the command, this is a description of how the ls command works, and then it gives you a list of all the options. Now if I type man pass wd, you can get information on the password command. And if I type man man, then it just gives you more information on how to use the man pages. So I know it sounds scary, but don't, don't be afraid of the man pages. This isn't a crazy Craigslist thing or anything like that. Um, so after the man pages, there's also what we call the info. So other than the man pages for getting information about commands, there's also the info command. So if I type info ls, you can see that it gives information in regards to the ls and it's just in a different format than the man pages. Some people prefer this command. Some people prefer to use the info command. And it's just another way to get information. Uh, if we type info pass wd, you can, you can see we're getting information in regards to the password command. So pretty similar to the man pages, but just gives a different set of information. Now another command for learning more about Linux and the commands that Linux has is the apropos command. And this is a very important one to know when you're first learning Linux because it can help you learn which commands you should be using. 
So say you wanted to copy a file, but you didn't know what the copy command was or how many different copy utilities you could use in Linux. You could type apropos copy and you need to spell apropos correctly. So let's spell that correctly here and then copy. And you can see that it gave me a list of all the commands that have something to do with copying files. So as you can see, there's just a ton of different copy utilities in the Linux system. And this is a good way if you forget which one you want to use or you want to discover a new way to find all the commands related to that. You can see here the copy file copies files and directories. Uh, there's RCP copy. So this is a good way to remotely copy files. There's rsync, which is good for syncing directories. And then scp, which is another good way for copying files to a remote location. So it's a very good command for finding out things what you need to know. And my advice is to use this command as much as possible when you're first discovering the Linux system, as it will help you discover lots of tools and commands that will help you. So that was the man info and apropos command. Let's have a look at the who command now. So if we type who, it tells us who's logged into our system. And this is actually a truncated version. If we type just W, we get the same basic info, but with some additional fields here. We can see that there's different TTY lines. And basically what these TTY lines are, are user sessions. So having a look here, we can see first one's TTY7. And this is the actual physical terminal connection. So this is my Raspberry Pi, and I have it hooked up to my TV. So the Pi user is logged on to the physical terminal. At the bottom here, we can see a PTS line. And you can see that it's coming from 10.1.1.35. And the process is actually the SSH daemon. So you can see this is my SSH session into my Linux box here. Now, if I were to open another SSH session and then type who, or better yet, just W, you can see now there is two PTS lines. So that's all I really wanted to show in regards to uh, the who command. It's very good to see who's actually logged into the system. And it's something I frequently do when I'm logging into a production system. It's always good to see who else might be logged into this box. If you're in operations and you're working on some sort of problem that's been reported, it's always good when you log on to the system to see who else is there as someone might already be working on it and you don't want to people doing the same thing and recreating the same type of work. So that's all I have to show for the who command. Let's move on to the next command. All right, so speaking of commands that I almost always type in when I first log into a Linux system, these next two ones are very useful when you first log in. So the first one I'm going to give you here is uname. And you can see that it doesn't actually return you a lot of information when you don't use any parameters. So I'm going to type this command again, but this time I'm going to do the dash A for all. And this is going to return me all the information that uname can give it. So as you can see, it returns quite a bit of information and you're going to want to be able to break down what each piece of information is here. So we have a kernel version, we have a kernel name, we have the host name. We have the processor type and we have the OS as well as a date and time. So I've thrown up all the options that you can run with this command and you'll want to get very familiar with running this command and just have it as a habit so you can easily pull up the host name of the system, pull up the architecture and whatever else type of information you'll need. Another command that you'll always be using if you're in operations and you're on a Linux machine is the uptime command. So I'm going to pull that command up and I'm going to do dash dash help and we'll be able to see the different options here. So if I just type uptime, you can see it gives you the current time and it's been up for about 23 hours here. There's four users logged in and this is the average load of the machine. Now load on a Linux machine is a whole nother subject that I'll cover in a different video, but it's also another question that I've seen come up in interviews is the various ways that you can see load on the system. So the uptime command is a quick and easy way to see how long the system's been up and how much load it's under. Now there's a few other options with the load command. There's not too many. 
you just do uptime dash p it gives you a prettier format if you do uptime dash s you can see that it's been up since 440 of september 10th so a very simple and easy command to use and a good one to have in your back pocket all right another command that i always use when i log into a system is the command last and basically what this does is shows you every single login and reboot that has happened on the system. So you can see that a reboot happened at this time and the Pi user was logging in here. There was a reboot and some logins over there. So a very handy command. All right, so the last command I'm gonna show here is the disk free command and you can use it by typing df. And this is gonna give you the total storage in the Linux system. I recommend using the dash H parameter and that's gonna make it human readable. And here you can see it returns the size back in gigabytes. So this is gonna show all the different file systems on your Linux machine and how, how big those systems are as well as the use space and available space. Now one other option that I like to use with the df command is uh, the dash dash total and it's going to give you a total summary. So you can see here my total disk space adds up to 508 gigabytes and I've used 136 gigs. So a very good command when in Linux and it's going to be one that you use all the time if you're a sysadmin. So anyways, that summarizes the 10 commands that I think that you should learn in Linux. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like. If you're interested in learning more about DevOps or Linux, please subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.